you know, it's all about, uh, <laughs> right now, it's it's about the focus of these kids right now. So the talking season's over. It's, it's about time to get out there and, and amp these situations up because this next week of fall camp is going to be pretty critical to uh, the depth chart, finaliz finalizing that up and making sure that this is the team that we're going to go into uh, the season with and, and make sure that we get them in the roles that they understand that is going to help the team and we start developing and just moving forward from there. You know, it's early on, but have you seen some improvement? I know specifically Coach did talk about receivers, wanting to get their routes crisper and all of that. Have you seen progression? I have, I have. So as a coach, you got to be pretty pleased uh, where we were at at the beginning of spring ball till now. I think there's been dr drastic improvements just all across the board, and it, it goes down to the little things, and that's what we've been preaching about, the attention to detail and you know, making sure that you're at your proper depths and being crisp with your routes and the timing of the plays and looking the ball in and making sure that you're getting upfield after you catch it and try to get a few more yards. The, the whole drop step, just that daily fundamentals, just where they're going, I've seen tremendous strides. Not where we want to be, but like if we keep stacking days like that over the next, you know, 11, 12 more practices that we got, it, it's going to end up working out in our favor. You know, it seems like you and Coach Stitt and others have it all. Y'all talk about details a lot, the little things. Is that's, that you think that's the that's main, main, main focus that y'all are really <laughs> drilling in on them? That's good to hear because that's what I'm preaching every single day with the kids. And when you have a coaching staff that is listening to what I believe is going to be a, the things that are going to separate us. And if you look back at it last year, we had. We had, and you know this, you had six games that we lost by 10 points. You had four that we lost within a touchdown. That comes to about two to five plays that probably hurt you throughout the course of that game. If you can minimize those, just and that's paying attention to the little things, understanding the situation, knowing what to do with the fo football in the bad, bad times or second and long or you know, third and long situations, just knowing what to do with the ball, you know, and like if you pay or and you look at it from a defensive perspective, if you know this is where you're supposed to drop with the integrity, like if you got to be on the hash mark and you're dropping coverage, well, be on the hash mark. You know what I mean? It's like those little things that that and we can control. If we can do that, then you know I think we can be competitive in every single game. And it's just pleasing that you know you got two coordinators that are preaching the same thing about. You know, if we do these little things correctly, you play with great effort you know, already. Your effort's there, but it's more than just playing with great effort. It's also being a smart football team and making sure you do the little things right. And I, it's pleasing to me to see the, these coordinators I got that are, are preaching that on a daily basis too. Not near the hash mark, on the hash mark. Yeah, Those like, type of details. Yeah, where's where's your drop? You know, and like, and that's. And we've been doing a lot of efficiency talks. Like the, the best example I've got that I, I opened up with uh, our, our first team meeting was the AFC Championship game, the Patriots versus the Chiefs. I don't know if you remember what happened in that game. It was... I know the Patriots won. And of course they did, but like it's a minute to go in the game. And Brady throws the pick on third and 10 and they're down four. But D Ford lined up off sides, which allowed the ball, the Patriots to go back on. They end up scoring. They end up going to their ninth Super Bowl after that. But the lining up off sides by like eight inches seriously cost them a trip to the Super Bowl. Like that's the stuff that you can't do, you know, and that's the, the little things matter, you know, and the communication and the stuff that we can control, we got to be very precise with that. It's kind of stuff that gives a coach nightmares. That exactly. Eight <laughs> I know. I, and I, D Ford is an unbelievable player, but he's got to live with that like eight inches for the rest of his life, you know. Man, he lined up off sides. I mean, just the, the lack of attention to detail at that moment. You know, we talk, it's good that y'all are on the same page with your coordinators, with the details. But an interesting dynamic is are you the youngest coach? On your staff, is there? I mean, uh, uh, the, the main guys, not the uh, off the field guys, but the main guys. I, uh, like I think might be. I think Morris, Morris and Tevin are younger than me. Uh, Morris and okay. Tevin. Yeah. I think everybody else is younger than me. That's an interesting like I, dynamic. I'm, this is going to be the fourth time I've said this today. I was four years old when Bob Stick called his first first play in a game. <laughs> He's been calling plays for 30 years, you know, which, uh, but like, that's why I have to put myself around people that have had, had different experiences than me. You know, Bob's built lower level programs and, you know, been at the FCS level with one of the better teams in the FCS, you know, and he's been calling plays for 30 years and Zach's been scarred by Big 12 defenses you know, for years now in the, in the Conference USA. So I, I laugh at Zach because 
he's actually the first time he's walked into a situation where the defense is the better side of the ball. Because in the Big 12, it's an offensive driven league, you know, and, and Zach goes out there and, and we may just crush the offense on a play, but he's like, well, Kyler Murray and Baker Mayfield and Mason Rudolph, they're going to attack that. That's their next move. You better be able to be disciplined and have the integrity to make sure that we're taking that away backside. No, so he's, that's where he's at. He's so far advanced with, you know, uh, the defense because he's been scarred by so many good offenses in the Big 12 that he's just preparing to, that he's like he's going up against the Big 12 offense on a daily basis. So it, it's it's been fun to watch him like coach these kids up even when they're having success to understand that offense and defense it's a chess match. You know, so if you're taking this away and you're exposing this, they're going to attack that. So you've got to be disciplined across the board. And that's the little things. You know, it's. It, it's uh, it's been fun to watch it all uh, kind of work out with these guys. You know, it's interesting when you game planning going from game planning the Sun Belt from uh, Kyler Murray. It's kind of a big difference. You know, know. Heisman Trophy winner to the Sun Belt. So yeah, I can, and, I can like, see that going. But down. I love the approach that you know it's hey it, Zach's gone up. Like I was laughing last year at Texas Tech. They went up against like in their first like five games like the top like five offenses in the country. It was like. <laughs> It was like oh, it was like Houston, it was us, uh, Ole Miss, you know, and then like, and then he ended up playing like, you know, uh, Oklahoma was rolling at the time. Oklahoma State was free. They played Oklahoma State in the top like four games. So it, you just that's that's why he's used to. It. It's like every single day, you know. And then after the first game of the season, you got to look back and be like, all right, where where would I game plan to try to destroy us right now if I was an offense coordinator playing it after the first game? You know, like, right. it's just a constant thought process. And I just, I love how it's just, you gotta keep thinking about every situation that possibly hurt you. And you know, last thing I got for you, you got the, you got the championships painted up here. The Nash Championship, yeah. Conference Championship. You talked about that a few weeks back. Yeah, we've uh, got 14 conference championships, two national championships. You know, it's just we've been playing football for 100 years. You know, it's they have one here. You know, that's the deal. You know, they they have one here. You know, they we've just been in a slump over the past. You know, what is it, four or five years? Four years. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, four years. And, uh, uh, but it kind of shows that there's a lot of pride and a lot of passion, a lot of winning cultures that have been at the school. And you think it's important for your players whenever they're practicing, they look up and they see that up there, it's kind of motivating? I, I, I think as much of that as possible. And I think that's just going to bring more of those guys back around, you know, because a lot of those guys did a lot of great things for this university, you know, and you want them to be a, around here and kind of sharing what they've done and the experiences that they had. and, and uh, you make sure that the culture that you have right now is realizing that they're playing for the people that came before them. You know, in talking to players, when I bring that up, they would say, they would talk about how you'd bring guys from the championship days to come speak to them and everything. Mm -hmm. You feel that's important too, to kind of kind of show that history and have these guys okay. talk to them and let them know what winners look like? Oh yeah, and, and that's the thing, you know, that the, the 80s group is probably the group that comes back the most because of the 81-82 national championship. and. And they're the ones that are so passionate about this program, you know, like there's been a lot of great, you know, decades here, but like the 80s are the ones that are constantly around because like those are some great days for them, you know, like they're all married to strutters, you know, they're all, you know, it's just, it's fun listening to their stories of Sam Marcus and like what they're going through and, and Jim Wacker and like the whole, like it's just, it's pretty fun stories to be a part of. Yeah, they seem like a pretty fun bunch, like they have, like to have a good time. <laughs> they do, they do. Well, cool coach, thank you. Awesome. So much. I appreciate, appreciate it. it.